So I just reported on the seven-year-old that was killed in a, in a gang-related shooting. It was not the seven-year-old, it was the target. And the seven-year-old was not a gang member, but uh, they were shot inside of a house. Rest in peace to Akeem Briscoe. Um, and this is an extremely common occurrence in Chicago, kids being killed. And last March, uh, this is March of 2022, there was a 12-year-old girl who was killed. She was celebrating a birthday with her family and she was shot while celebrating that birthday. And that case has now been resolved all these months later. And a shout out to the investigators that uh, brought this to an apparent close. Now these, these guys are innocent until proven guilty. So uh, we're not gonna jump to the conclusion that they did it yet, but um, they have released images of uh, the shooters. So I'm gonna break down uh, a little bit later what block that is and what uh, gangs are around there, man. But uh, what basically happened in the incident was that these guys were there on a block that I don't know if they claim or if they were just, you know, over there at that particular time, but some ops came through uh, and they started blowing at the ops and uh, they hit this girl. They were over by 72nd in Oakley uh, they said that the police said that a rival gang member drove past them in a black Mercedes and turned north on Oakley. About two minutes later, the, th the three men shot at the car as it drove off. Um, so Nazaria, who had turned 12 that day, was riding in the backseat of her, her mother's car heading north on Oakley at the same time that the men opened fire. So this was a separate separate car. Nazaria's family was not the, the ops they were shooting at. A bullet shattered the back of the window, striking her in the head. And uh, she died from her injuries days uh, later. So she had a, a little sister who, you know, obviously now lost her big sister, but police found 25 shell casings from three handguns at the intersection. And uh, David Brown said, we want to send a strong message to these violent offenders that this won't be tolerated in the city of Chicago and that there will be a price to pay for the, uh, in the criminal justice system for you. Now, to me, I think personally, they should also, if they can catch the guy who, uh, was coming through the op that was coming through even though he didn't blow they should arrest him too like if you're if you're in a gang okay and you're on the ops block sliding through the ops block you should be booked like that should be a crime you know what i'm saying because you're the one like drawing the fire like you're instigating it you know people know where to, where they can go and where they can't go um so at any rate man police released the surveillance video of the shooting uh in march these two guys um were arrested on Sunday and uh, they were among four people that were spotted getting out of a stolen Ford Mustang and, and they ran from officers when the officers approached them near the car. The uh, police found the uh, the key fob to the stolen Mustang in one of their pockets. Abdul ran from the officers with a handgun in his right hand. He ran through a gangway where he dropped a nine millimeter Glock loaded with 19 live rounds. The gun had an extended clip capable of holding 31 rounds and a functioning automatic switch. So Abdul also was charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon and criminal trespass to a vehicle. There was a third guy who was arrested in the same uh, incident. Officers recovered a loaded handgun with an extended magazine. But uh, preliminary tests showed that none of the guns that the officers found during the arrest were used in her shooting. So uh, whether or not they have the right guys, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, that's, that's one thing that's up in the air, um, because, you know, they don't have the weapon yet, but, uh, what information they have, I'm not sure, you know, that led them to these guys. I don't, I don't know. But the, uh, the article that the Sun-Times had reported back when this girl was killed, her name was Nazaria. They said a 12 year old girl who was shot Tuesday evening while out celebrating her 12th birthday with, with a family in West Inglewood has died. The girl whose name was Nazaria was pronounced dead. Late Friday morning, they said at Comer Children's Hospital, according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Tuesday evening, the child was riding in a car when someone on the street opened fire in the 2300 block of West 72nd, about a block from where she lived. She was wounded in the back of the head and taken to the hospital. Nazaria was the 13th child younger than 17 shot and killed in Chicago. So far at that point in the year, now there's been you know, several months since that, community activists uh, we're saying the parents were uh, hoping and looking for a miracle, but they said they're in shock and they lost their baby. The mother and father just wanted their child to heal up and be safe, but unfortunately, the young lady succumbed to her injuries. So the girl's parents donated her organs because they said she was a very giving person. Shortly after the shooting, um, the girl had just turned 12 and was fighting for her life. So the police superintendent, David Brown, had vowed on, uh, on that Wednesday back in March to use the full brunt of every resource that we have to catch the killer. He said this was heinous, reckless, senseless, 
and the gangs involved and you know who you are were coming after you so the community was hoping that somebody was going to come forward uh to you know basically give up information about who was responsible um but you know i mean in chicago we have that don't snitch code and and that thing is it's a it's like a curse on the city man so the shooting occurred in the cpd's eighth district which at that point in the year had seen a 20 a 29 percent increase in shootings that year compared to the same time last year according to police data overall crime they said was up 54 percent in the district including more aggravated batteries robberies burglary thefts and uh and motor vehicle thefts now that was that was for march so nobody was coming forward and um you know they were waiting for something to happen the police then about a week later released the surveillance video which i'm not gonna play here because it always gets a strike when i do that but um i'm gonna put up the images and you can see the one guy has a handgun that with what looks like a drum mag on it and i told guys and i don't know if this is the guy that actually hit the girl but i told guys these guys are out here with these drum mags with these handguns these and you see he's holding it with one hand okay these things are like impossible to control the, the recoil when, when there's and i don't i don't know if there's a switch on that thing or not but when they go out there with the switch on the handgun with the drum mag bro that thing is flying around in these guys hands like it's a hot potato you know and, and the bullets are going i mean the angle uh, on the gun you can see like when you slow it down in slow motion like the angle at which the gun is firing is changing by like 45 degrees with each shot i mean it's it's absolutely insane man so you know the, these bullets are just going everywhere but the target and the uh, chicago police they said are asking for help identifying th now this is from a week later this article they said uh, chicago police are asking for help identifying who they believe was involved in a shooting that left 12 year old girl dead in west inglewood police released video showing three people who appear to be firing guns down a street near the scene around the time of the shooting now notice they're firing from a distance down the street okay and uh they just you know repeated some of the other information police said the family was you know in that area shortly before 8 p.m when somebody began firing shots down the street and uh, she was hit in the back of the head and the cbd alert released saturday focuses they said on just two of the suspects as one of the suspects caught on surveillance uh cannot be clearly made out so the area where the shooting occurred has seen an increase in violence they said in shootings of about 30 percent and then uh, they give more st statistics on the uh, increases in shootings but hey though we have had a resolution announced so police it's now this is that that happened back in march okay so this is um you know, it, it, this is actually not that long when it comes to an investigation like that because, you know, you, you got to remember that they got to have all the um, pieces to be able to bring charges. You know, a lot of times they might know, but if they don't have, you know, enough material evidence, they can't bring the charges yet. But so Chicago police announced Tuesday charges against two men in the fatal shooting of a 12 year old girl. They said she was actually sleeping in that car when she was killed and police said the girl was shot in the back of the head. On Tuesday, Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown announced that a 22-year-old named Malik and another man named Abdul have been charged with first-degree murder. Uh, now, which guy actually fired the shot that killed her, I don't know. But uh, Superintendent Brown also said that uh, Malik has also been charged with possession of a stolen motor vehicle and that uh, Abdul was charged with unlawful use of a weapon. So he said that uh, Malik is a convicted felon who has been arrested 11 times and Abdul has been arrested four previous times. And uh, he said that a third suspect remains at large. At any rate, man, as you guys can see, the virtual genocide of kids in Chicago uh, continues, man. And uh, they're constantly getting hit. It's almost a daily thing now. And, you know, remember this. Uh, I'm asking everybody to remember this. When they see a lot of these social media posts by these guys on live looking for their ops. I want to discuss that, too. Uh, i might have to go live on here man take questions from you guys because some guys a lot of guys have been asking me about this type of stuff because this is a growing trend uh gang members and i'm not going to say names in this video but i will probably say some names uh when i discuss this man because uh it's a growing trend and from my generation this is like unimaginable but today man everybody's going on live looking for their ops sliding on the ops neighborhood you know showing themselves in the ops block and uh you know taunting the robs going back and forth with them on live in real time and remember all these kids getting killed when you see that because these things get a lot of attention and they get a lot of a clout on social media and the blogs pick it up i haven't been posting that stuff 
I used to post some of that stuff back then. I don't post that stuff anymore. Guys are out there, you know, grabbing attention, grabbing clout off this, and uh, everybody glorifying and feeding into it, which, you know, like I said, I used to do. But um, that's feeding into it, man, and it's feeding into this. It's feeding into this. A lot of the OGs, they say, play the game, but just, you know, don't involve anybody that's not playing that game with you. It's not, it doesn't work like that. If the game is going on, innocents are going to get hit. You know, that's like trying to play baseball in a small yard and not break any windows. You know, even if guys aren't trying to do that, once in a while that ball's going to go over the fence. And uh, it did in this case, and rest in peace in this area, man. But uh, for everybody living in that area, just know there's guys out there playing like this, playing this stuff like it's a game. Um, and when they die, their homies the next day are out there doing the exact same thing, keeping it going. Nobody learns their lesson. And... Um, you know, guys get more ups. You know, they they really come at you more when they're threatened with jail than when they're threatened with death. It's it's a strange it's a strange phenomenon, man. But um, you know, these kids have nothing to do with this. They can't control where they live at at that age. They can't. They're stuck there in this crossfire war zone. There was a baby hit posted um, not too long ago that was shot in the back of the head. You saw the guys hopping out of the car. This was caught on surveillance video, hopping out of the car, just blowing every direction, uh, hit nobody but a baby in the back of the head. And luckily that baby survived, but how many babies have not survived? Um, like how many times does it have to happen? Like it's up to people to make choices because these guys are making their choices. You can see it on social media all the time, man. Uh, and so, you know, thankfully the police at least have a, an apparent resolution to this case. I don't know if it's a final resolution, but um, rest in peace in this area, man, and um, hopefully everybody that's got kids over there will leave because this is, there's no end in sight right now. Like, there's no end in sight to this. With the, with the way it's going now, it's getting worse. You know, the, the cloud chasing and everything is, is getting worse, and uh, it's, it's turning up the streets, you know, and I'm not saying that these guys were doing that. I don't think that this guy was on live when he was coming through their block, but... Um, like the guys are getting more and more crazy with it less and less careful and, you know the culture is changing to become less and less careful uh we guys from my generation thought that it was bad when we started seeing kids getting killed left and right um you know 10 years ago it's gotten even worse uh it's it's become a regular thing so rest in peace to all the and all the kids out there man when you see report i'm out